Okay, so now that we've talked about our different types of um, syringes and our different types of needles, let's talk about an intradermal. Now an intradermal, um, you've all had them, they are your TB tests and they go right here in your forearm, okay? So let's demonstrate, it's one of the favorite injections of all nurses, it's kind of fun. Um, let's talk about what size of needle we're going to need, what size of syringe, and the angle we're going to use here. So, first of all, I'm gonna need my alcohol pad. I'm gonna need a TB syringe, which is one milliliter maximum. And I'm going to need a very, very small needle. So the needle I'm gonna choose for this is a 25 gauge, 5 eighths inch. Okay, it's a very small, very fine needle. And the reason why is because I'm not trying to get that all the way into the tissue. I am trying to create just a small bubble underneath the first layer of tissue. So I want something that I can work with uh, that won't go deep into the tissue. Okay, so always, 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 every single time you give an injection, the first thing you do is wash your hands. Okay, wash your hands, um, put on gloves. Um, people usually tend to have a little bit of blood when you give an injection, so just always wear gloves, okay? With the alcohol, we clean a very specific way before an injection. We choose the site of the injection and we start at the center with alcohol and we start cleaning in a circular motion, okay? And we start in the center and we get on the outside larger and larger in that circle, okay? We never wanna go back from the outside and clean in the center again because we're pulling contaminants to that injection site. So start at the center, work your way out. We never want to get into the habit of fanning, blowing on our site to dry it. We just wait for that to air dry, okay? All right, so now I'm going to get my solution ready. I have my syringe, I have my needle, and I have my uh, medication I'm going to instill. So I verify this is tuberculin syringe, or tuberculin solution. I'm going to give 0.5 milliliters of solution, so it is appropriate. So I'm going to go ahead and open my syringe, being very careful not to contaminate that tip. And I'm going to open my needle. Now remember, this needle opens so that they connect right together. And I'm gonna push that on really, really well. Now, one habit to get into, when you guys push these needles, don't ever do this, and push that needle on with your thumb. I want two C's, C, C, and attach those needle and syringe together, okay? So that's on really well. I don't need to take my cap off quite yet, okay? I wanna get my vial ready. At this point, if I need to lay this down, you can. It's a good habit to keep a hold of this or at least set it down and keep it in its wrapper. Just keep it as clean as possible. With vials of medication, um, some are single dose, some are multi-dose. The multi-dose do have preservatives inside. When you open a multi-dose, you need to put the date, the time, and your initials because per policy for each facility, they will dictate when you have to throw that vial away when it's been opened. So this is a brand new vial. You can see this cap is on, okay? This is a single dose vial, we're gonna say, okay? So when I pop this off, that is sterile. You heard that pop. I don't have to clean this because I just barely took a sterile lid off. So I don't need to clean this, okay? And we'll talk about multi-dose vials later. But for now, this is a single dose. I set this down. And one thing to teach you guys is the pressure of syringes, okay? The pressure of syringes versus the pressure of vials. So I need to keep the pressure inside this vial the same. And the reason why is because it decreases the bubbles in the solution when you draw it up. Um, it also makes it so that when you pull your needle out, it doesn't squirt medication across the room, okay? So we need to remember any quantity of fluid I will remove from this vial, I need to replace with air, okay? So if I need 0.5 milliliters of fluid, I draw up 0.5 milliliters of air, okay? Two Cs, I'm going to take this syringe off I always know where this cap is. This cap does not get set down, and I'm always aware of where the needle is when I unsheath that needle. Now, I stab that into this vial, and I inject my air. Now I invert, and being very careful, I watch these increments, very slowly draw up this fluid. Overshoot how much quantity you need because you're gonna get some air. And then you're gonna push that fluid back in. 
and I have 0.5. The level of the fluid needs to be at the top bevel of that black mark in the syringe. Okay, so once I'm satisfied with the quantity that I have, I pull that needle out, I set this vial down. Now, this is considered a clean needle, okay? I have not injected this into my patient. It is a clean needle. If it was dirty, if I had injected this into my patient, this goes immediately into the sharps. That's clean versus dirty. Clean is before you inject the patient, dirty is after you inject the patient. But I'm not going to walk around with an uncapped needle. So in order to recap this, I set my cap down and I do a one-handed scoop. Okay, so I scoop that cover back on and then I pop that lid back on. Okay, so that cap is now, so now I'm safe to carry this around. Another tip, when you draw up medication into a syringe, um, you need to make sure and label that this is the medication that you are giving. So you either tape the vial of medication right to your syringe, so you can take it into the room, or you have it labeled on the wrapper in some way that you know what is in this syringe, okay? So let's go ahead and administer this. I have cleaned this. If I'm unsatisfied or I feel like it's been a while or I haven't kept a good eye on my patient, I can go back and clean it again. But remember, we start at the, at the center, we rotate out in a circular motion. So for an intradermal, I want to give this uh, medication bevel up. And what that means is this needle uh, kind of comes at an angle. Okay, there's a longer point and then it kind of tapers up. When I give a wheel injection, the longest point of that needle needs to be at the bottom. Okay, so the bevel, the curved portion of the needle needs to be up. We just want this injection, injection to go in at a five to 15 degree angle. And we just want that bevel all the way underneath that first layer of skin. And we're gonna start to inject slowly. And you can see this bubble start to form, and that is a wheel. Now that we have all the fluid in, we pull the needle out at the same angle. Now, this is now considered a dirty needle, and we do not set this on the table. We never recap this needle. It goes straight into the sharps container. So I'm going to be very cautious of where my needle is. I'm going to dispose of it in the sharps. So that is an intradermal injection.